All right, everyone, this is not an easy video emotionally for me to make, but I got to do it. And the main thrust of the video is for all of you people out there that hate racism, I want you to understand that once you get rid of the Washington Redskins logo and nickname, you will have done literally nothing to fight racism. And I say this, this is why it's so difficult. I have hated the Redskins every waking moment of my life since I was seven years old. I despise them. I don't like their stadium. I don't like their players. I don't like their fans. Nothing. Hate them. And the fact of the matter is, I am one of those people who would say that, yeah, the logo and all of the symbols would be racist, but that's part of life. And, and the fact of the matter is, I've encountered this issue not just regarding that team, the Washington Redskins, or the team that used to be called the Washington Redskins. I've encountered it because I live, I live in Cleveland. We have the Cleveland Indians here. Um, Indians had a massive, massive uh, following when I was growing up because the Browns had moved out of town. The baseball team was doing very well. They made it to the World Series two times when I was a kid. Um, I personally was, uh, I wouldn't say I was like the biggest fan, but I definitely followed it, watched a lot of games, was a huge baseball fan, used to watch the Indians and the Atlanta Braves and the Chicago Cubs any day that I could because those were the three teams that were on TV almost every day. I think the White Sox were on TV pretty often too, on WGN, just like the Cubs. And I can tell you that despite the fact that all of those teams, except the Cubs and the White Sox, except, well, maybe the, <laughs> we don't even know what's going to happen with the White Sox. Obviously, you never know what's going to happen in 2020, what's going to be called racist next. But, the, th the three teams with Indian logos that I mentioned, the Braves, the Indians, and the Redskins, have been called racist for years. And I would agree that the symbolism, you know, the Chief Wahoo logo and all of that, yeah, I would say, yes, it is racist. I would say that it isn't really appropriate to refer to Native Americans like that. And that's why, for a while, I was going to the stadium to... On, on opening day to cover initially, I was trying to do a project on it, the opening day protest against Chief Wahoo. And then later I, I, sim I simply agreed with them. I, I stopped having any, I stopped owning any Cleveland Indians gear. I was, I was already like, you know, I was a Chicago Cubs fan. I still own some Indians gear because I live here, uh, still watch the games of both teams. And the fact is that when I look back on it, even if the logo was racist, changing the logo doesn't really change anything. The fact of the matter is that the guys who were the main proponents of this campaign were themselves aware, at least the American Indian ones, they were aware that, yes, the logos are racist, but that's not the main issue with American Indians. And this, this is Robert Roca, who I spoke to a couple times at those protests and always a nice person to everyone, even pastors by like me. I, I wasn't with the media. I wasn't with any sort of big organization would talk to any person who, who, who passed by him, even though he's a very far left radical, never, ever, ever had anything unkind to say to anyone unless they were unkind to him. And this is what he had to say. Think. This We're going to talk about Chief Wahoo. Well, let me tell you something. Chief Wahoo is, a, is an important concern of us. But if you had a list with all the different concerns that we have, and you have some of them right now, we pass that out. He's on the bottom of the list. But what it breaks down to is recognizing us as human beings, as people, and not mascots. And we are a race of people, a very proud race of people. And I want to sum it up real fast by telling you we were practicing our religion. We had governments, we had, we had apartment complexes while the Europeans were still crouching in their caves. That's how advanced we were. We had civilizations that were extremely advanced. Um, so 
the uh, I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I got onto that. I forgot where, what direction I was going with that. But uh, oh, just again about the stereotyping and, and to demean us as a uh, as a uh, as a character is is very very offensive. But again, it's on the bottom of the list. The services that we provide, which that doesn't include all of them, by the way, are those services that the Indian. Center so, to reiterate what he was saying, this this is uh. These these stereotypes of Native Americans being savages, being brutal warriors and things like that, those are part of the imagery used in some of these uh, cartoons. I mean, I could show you um, some of the cartoons over the years. Let me see. Uh, I mean, you could, you could see this. I would say if you saw the last video, there was a similar image there. Um, <laughs> you know, this is funny, uh, making fun of Elizabeth Warren over there. Um, you got, th this was when they dropped the Chief Wahoo logo itself. Um, you, th here's people making fun of the logo as if it was um, applied to other groups, including Indians, by the way, like East Asian Indians. Um, <laughs> you know, th this was... I mean, the, the, these are caricatures of an ethnic group, okay? Here's one caricaturing the 2016 World Series. So, no, I, I don't really believe that you can get away with saying that this isn't racist. But these logos, and, and this, you can even see Roca in this image over here, was actually confronted by a person... And, and and this guy was saying, but I'm honoring you. And the this this cartoon was published in 2002. I, this was in 2014. So art imitates life, limit, imitates art. That's what the, how the saying goes. So I am eminently sensitive to the issue of Native American logos, and especially given the story that I heard from Robert Roca from from his own like personally in person from him. I definitely supported removing the Chief Wahoo logo. And yet, okay, and yet, and I want to, to make this clear, I don't think that it does anything to end any sort of racism. I think people are going to be racist whether or not there are logos or not. And the people in this city who used to wear Indians gear, still wear it, still have the flags, still have all the, you know, the commemorative baseballs and all of that, they weren't doing that because they were racist. They love baseball. They like, um, you know, some of the classic Indians players like Bob Feller and Frank Robinson and Albert Bell and uh, who else? Uh, Sandy Alomar. And those those were some good teams. And those of us that follow those teams when we were growing up or those of us that went to the ball games and used to obviously spend it, spend that time with our friends, sometimes our families. It had nothing to do with racism, but the symbols themselves are racist. So therefore, I didn't really feel bad when they got rid of the logo, but I understand that fans who always associated with, with baseball know that they are losing something. And therefore, I don't think that this really accomplishes anything. You're seeing a small group of people feel a little more, bit more happy and a much larger group of people feel a little bit more alienated because of political intervention in sports. That's really what I'm trying to tell you. Politics being um, imposed onto sports does not actually cause people to come together. If anything, it drives them further apart. Bob Costas tried in 2013 to say in the middle of a broadcast that, and, and here we can play it. Well, I'm not going to play it. I don't want this video to be too long, but he went on this monologue in the middle of a Washington Dallas uh, uh, ball game in 2013 during halftime talk, moralizing about the Washington Redskins nickname. And the fact of the matter is everybody transparently saw that he was in no position to criticize anyone because Bob Costas was being paid to cover that same game in which one of the teams that 
participated, he found morally objectionable, right? So I have always stood by this position that the logos themselves are racist, and I understand some of the people who want to remove them. But people like ABL, Anthony Brian Logan, whose website I published this on, have pointed out accurately that polls have showed okay, that Native Americans do not find them to be racist. Okay, the majority of Native Americans don't find them racist. Some of them obviously do. There's a division of opinion. That means that we will never have a total consensus on whether this is racist or not and on whether these logos are important. So, or are, sorry, are racist. Uh, and finally, the, the, the real issue right now is that this is about money. This is about the fact that the corporate oligarchy, corporate America, FedEx, and the city of Washington, D.C., and all of these other sponsors finally turned against Daniel Snyder, the Washington uh, owner, and said to him, um, you have to change the logo or else we won't do business with you and you won't be able to get your new ballpark in D.C., so this has to do with money. Nobody cares about racism. This is all fake. People who think that eliminating racism has to do with logos are out of their goddamn minds. And, and uh, beyond that, I, I raise this issue. So this is a summary of the article. I will post the article in the description. But while I understand that the logos are racist, I think if you really have a problem with the Washington Redskins or with the Atlanta Braves or with the, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs, the, the Cleveland Indians, Chicago Blackhawks, all of those teams, there's other teams you can root for. You can root for the Bears. You can root, I, I root for the Cowboys. You can root for the Broncos. You can root for the Raiders. <coughs> right? There's the Cardinals. There's all these other teams that you could potentially root for. Right. And, and yet you choose to dwell on the one team that you find offensive. That, that's why you have other teams. That's why it's called a competition, because if you don't like one team, you have the option of supporting another one. Uh, some people would say, oh, well, I live in this town. I live in the D.C. area. Why should I have to be represented by? No, you don't have to be. The, I, I live in Cleveland. I've never been to uh, Texas or Chicago in my life. And I, I'm a, I've been a fan of both of those teams. Right. And part of the reason, to be honest with you that I'm a fan of the Cubs much more than, than the than the Cleveland Indians is because of the Wahoo logo. I picked a different team and I don't really regret it. And and I'm sorry to say, um, you know, it's it's certainly raised a lot of eyebrows among people that know me. But I think that if people don't like their team having a bad logo, having something that they find objectionable, they should just change which team that they support and, and uh the, the main thrust I'm, that that should be the the point here getting to the bottom of this of this issue why this isn't going to end racism why this isn't going to do anything for native americans is because nobody is talking about the real problems that native americans and alaska natives as they're defined in the census data are facing which are horrible life expectancy you know there's more homicides there's five times as many deaths from cirrhosis there's almost two times as many suicides there's three times as many that are likely to die from diabetes okay there's they they have the highest metrics in domestic violence the highest addiction rates for illicit drugs as well as alcohol alcohol i think that they're somewhere in the middle believe it or not the poverty rate is is at the top higher than the black community uh, college achievement rates are way, way behind white counterparts. There isn't data that I was watch that I found that, that compared to the other groups. And then homelessness. The only group that has more homelessness than Native Americans are Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. And, and Roka was describing for like his own experience to me. This is why it, it, it really, you know, I, I personally thought that it was a very important story to at least explore back at the time. This was when I was in college about seven or eight years ago. Um, he was part of the generation that was in the American Indian, let's see what it was called. 
the American Indian Relocation Act of 1956. And, and in that bill, Congress and the Eisenhower administration tried to get Native Americans to move to the cities, and it was a big failure. A lot of those people moved to the cities. They had no circle of people to really help them or guide them in their new – because they don't have any family there. They don't have any sort of communal setting. And it was it was a huge flop, and, and people like him ended up being poor for the rest of their lives. He himself ended up going to prison – after I met him a few years later for embezzling funds that were that were federal grant dollars for his organization, the American Indian Movement. But that's besides the point. OK, we have to start talking about the fact that changing logos is not going to help Native Americans. They suffer from the worst poverty in America, the worst health metrics. Um, there's there's uh, they've already moved on to the Texas Rangers calling them racist. Why don't you have these billionaire phonies why don't you tell them to buy shelter for some of these american indians maybe donate for addiction counseling services things like that um maybe have them look into advisor services for college students from the native american community that that's what would actually help i think dan snyder actually tried for a while to do that and people were making fun of him for it even though, I mean, to be honest with you, fuck Dan Snyder. He, he's the owner of the Redskins. But uh, I mean, you can't you can't complain that he tried to help them, even though he was trying to pander to them to save his logo. Uh, anyway, please like, share and subscribe. You can also find me on all of the different social media that you can see behind me, uh, especially on library. Find me on library and I'll talk to you later. Have a great rest of your Wednesday.